All right, you get over here. Now, you answer that door, and remember, nobody has to get hurt. Yes, sir. Oh, evening, Mr. Barkley. Evening, Sam. Kind of got you burning the midnight oil, haven't I? That shipment of gold come in yet? Yes, sir, Mr. Barkley. We loaded it quite a while ago. It's already on board the train. You wait right here. I'll get the bill of lading for you. Fine. Say, by the way, what happened to Monty? Monty? Yeah, he was supposed to meet me over at my office as soon as he got back from the mine. Let me went out for a cup of coffee. At this hour? Something bothering you, Sam? No, not a thing. Everything is just fine. Well, I'm going home. If he comes back here, tell him I want to see him first thing in the morning. Mr. Barkley, wait, please. Hold it. How is he, Nick? Well, we don't really know yet. The doctor's up with him. Any luck, Sheriff? Oh, well, it's too dark to pick up his trail tonight. We're going to try again in the morning. We're going to have to have an awful lot of luck to catch him without some sort of identification. Let's hope Jared can tell us something. Well, let's just hope he pulls through. I'm going up there. Nick, the doc said to wait. Well, he's been up there more than an hour. Well, there's not a thing you can do up there except get in the way. I guess you're right. Nick, he, he's going to be all right. Thanks to the good doctor. Oh, don't thank me. Thank the good Lord. That bullet wasn't an inch or two over. Can we see him now? Well, I've given him something to sleep, Nick. It would be better if he wasn't disturbed. Rest is what he needs most. Well, Victoria, I'll be back tomorrow to change those bandages. Doc, how soon will he be able to see somebody? Oh, day, maybe two. I don't think it'll be any less than that, Sheriff. Remember, Victoria, no moving around and plenty of sleep. All right. Thank you, Doctor. Good night. Try not to worry. Fred, did you see Sam's wife? Yeah, she took it pretty hard. I'll go see her tomorrow. Audra, I think we could all use some coffee. I'll put some on. Victoria, did Jared say anything at all about the men who shot him? Oh, yes. He recognized them. Oh? The Dunnigan brothers. Dunnigan brothers? Mark and Davy Dunnigan. Well, they shouldn't be too hard to find. They hang out in Sunflower. Fred, how long would it take to get up a posse? Sunflower's across the state line, Nick. So? Isn't a thing I can do. Not a thing you can do. 
Fred, they killed two men right in front of your nose. They came close to killing Jared. My authority ends at the state line. You know that, Nick. I just can't go chasing into another state. Now, I'll give you as large a posse as you need, but they'll have to stay within the state limits. They're not going to stick around here. I'm sorry, boys. That's the best I can do. Now, I've got no more love for the Dunnigans than I have for Frank and Jesse James. But if they're back in Sunflower, they're out of my reach. Well, it looks like we'll just have to bring them back here ourselves. But once they are back, they can be tried for murder, right? They can. And be convicted, too, with Jared's testimony. But if you try bringing them back here against their will, they have every right in the world to defend themselves. You mean they have the right to kill us? Exactly. What you're planning to do, Heath, is illegal. Legal, illegal. Why don't you tell some of that stuff to Sam's widow and kids, huh? All right. All right, Nick. I gotta be getting back. Uh, do one thing for me. Check with Marshal Moore and Sunflower before you try to do anything yourselves. All right? All right, if it'll help. But I'll tell you one thing. We're gonna get those Dunnigans back here in a cell. You can count on that. Not a bad looking town. You get a load of that. Grateful citizens. You figure they don't know where the Dunnigans get the money for those contributions? Well, now they can't be that stupid. They must know they're outlaws. Well, I guess they figure a contribution's a contribution no matter where it comes from. Well, let's get the horses put up. Howdy, gentlemen. Howdy. Can I help you? Yeah. I'd like you to clean up and put up the horses, will you? Glad, sir. Oh. Just sign right here, please. That covered? Yes, sir. Tomorrow night also, if you're staying. We might be. Barkley. That's right. You the same Barkley's on that big spread in your stocking? The same. I've heard about you. Well, I'm Heath. This is my brother Nick. We're uh, looking for the Dunnigan brothers. Do you know them? Sure. Everyone in Sunflower knows him. Well, could you tell us where we might find him? No. Well, could you tell us where the marshal's office is? The corner building. Just beyond the square. All right, take good care of him, huh? Sorry, gentlemen. Straight flush. Oh, Jamie. You won again. Well, how could I lose with you standing next to me? Mark, keep your eye on this. And you, my little good luck charm, you follow me. I got something for you. That is, of course, if you gentlemen will excuse me. <laughs> Willie, let's have that box. That's it. There we are. Now then. Oh. Look at that. Davy, it's beautiful. Oh, it's just beautiful. There's no beating that brother of mine. He's an expert at cards and women. A little more, John? Why not? Hmm. Davy, you can see right through it. <laughs> you can? <laughs> well, he drinks for everybody. <laughs> Well, Not now, Jerry. I'm busy. It's important. I gotta talk to you. Later, son. Later. Mr. Donegan? Three kings. That's not good enough, John. I got three aces. Does it to me? It's Mr. John here. 
Well, no, Mark, you don't have to do that. No, I don't have to do that. I want to do that. Just call it a loan. You pay me back when you can. Thank you very much, Mark. Thanks very much. Now, Jerry, what is it? Two men rode into town named a Barkley. They want to know where you... Davy. Yeah. Barclays are in town. They asked me about you. They wanted to know where you were. I told them I didn't know. How many of them are there, Jerry? Two. They asked the way to the marshal's office. They did, huh? Hey, uh, Jerry, thanks a lot. Thanks, Mr. Dunnigan. Mark? Now, what kind of business would the Barclays be doing with our marshal? I told you I want you to listen, not talk. This town, my town, is almost entirely free from crime. And the rest of the county is almost as good. Do you know why that is? Yes, we know why that is. Because the Dunnigans do their robbing and killing someplace else. You saw the schoolhouse on your way into town. The Dunnigans paid for almost all of it. Three years ago, we had a drought. Bad one. Practically every head of stock would have been wiped out if the Dunnigans hadn't bought 50 carloads of hay, had it shipped all the way down from the Sacramento Valley. You want me to go on? No, no, not necessarily. What I'm trying to tell you is this. The Dunnigan brothers are Sunflower's most popular and important citizens. It's mighty unlikely that anyone would take kindly to a couple of strangers who accuse them of robbery or murder. Well, now, we're not talking to just anyone. We're talking to the Marshal of Sunflower. And the Marshal of Sunflower tells you this. The crimes you mentioned took place in San Joaquin County, which is out of my jurisdiction. Then you don't intend to give us any help at all, huh? Couldn't if I wanted to. Which you don't. Gentlemen, I'm not trying to intimidate you. Just like to give you some advice. It's friendly advice, even though you may not believe that at this moment. Forget it. I just don't see how we can do that, Marshal. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Yeah. If you're still looking for the Dunnigans, they're over in the saloon. They told me to tell you they'd like to buy you a drink. Yeah? Welcome to Sunflower, gentlemen. My name is Davy Dunnigan. This is my brother, Mark. Willie, set up a bottle for our guests. Have a drink, gentlemen, on me. Be with you just as soon as I finish this hand. How's it feel living on a goldfish bowl? How long are we going to put up with this foolishness? As long as this pretty whiskey holds up. Huh? Happy days. Well, thank you, honey. Well, Mark? 
Mark. I think I'll call you. I've got a straight. Well, I'm afraid that uh, finishes me. Well, gentlemen, y'all got business here in Sunflower, or are you just uh, passing through? Matter of fact, we're here on business. We might as well get to it. Seems that last Friday night, two men decided to rob the Stockton Depot of 10,000 gold. Killed two men doing it. Station agent and one of our hands. Also tried to kill our brother, but didn't. Our brother recognized him as uh, the Dunnigans. Well, I've never been so absolutely flabbergasted in my whole life. Oh? Mr. Barkley, I'm sorry to hear about your trouble. But let me tell you something. Me and my brother Mark, why, we never set foot in Stockton in our whole lives. Ain't that right, Mark? That's right. Why, you two men made this whole long trip for nothing. Why don't you have another drink on the house before you start back? Well, now we weren't figuring starting back just yet. Oh, no? All we want you to do is prove where you were. Well, we don't have to prove anything. In this country, you're innocent until you're proved guilty. Exactly. So you two shouldn't mind going back and facing the man that says he saw you. <laughs> you know, the trouble with you, Barclays, is you're just like all the rest. You're always willing to believe the worst about folks who've got a... What is it they say? A different political persuasion from yours. Now, let me tell you something about the Dunnigans that maybe you don't know. There used to be quite a few more of us. We all fought on the side of the Confederacy. We were all raiders, every one of us. And now that just me and Mark is left. And yeah, we were mighty poor by the time the war was finished. Of course, all of us on the wrong side were poor. But for some reason or other, most Yankees seem to end up pretty well off. We're getting a little off the subject. Nobody's talking about the war. Well, I'm talking about the war. Here in Sunflower, we ain't forgotten it. And the rich folks in San Francisco, and Sacramento, Washington, and Stockton, they ain't forgotten it either. <laughs> Me and my brother Mark, why, we ain't the kind to go around killing people, except in line of duty when we had to. But I'll tell you this. We ain't riding to Stockton or any other unfriendly place to have a lot of unfriendly people accuse us of murder. We're innocent, but we ain't stupid, I'll tell you that. Now, you still got business in this town, gentlemen? We might have. All right, you have till tonight to do it. Well, we... We figured it'd take a little longer than that. And what do you think you're gonna do about it? Well, all you have to do to find out is stay here. Yeah, just try it. Well, the odds can't get much better than they are now, can they? So you, threatening. You're gonna make that threat good right here and right now in front of these witnesses. Now, let me tell you people something. I'm the only doctor in town, and I'm out of practice extracting bullets. Now, what's the matter with you two? Do you have any idea how many innocent people can get shot up, including you? And you, kindly use the brains the good Lord gave you and go home. How can you possibly believe that you'd be allowed to harm this town's two most important citizens? Look around you. Do you see any friendly faces? Whoa. Whoa, uh, I think the doc is right. I mean, I reckon we have been a mite less than hospitable, wouldn't you say? But I tell you what, now you Barclays, you just make yourselves to home. Stay just as long as you want. My brother here, he's just a little put out. I mean, after all, you come in here accusing him of a crime. He's sensitive. I apologize for him. But I want to say right here and now that you two gentlemen got plenty of good old-fashioned guts. Have another drink. Oh, if you're still around tonight, why, come on over here. We're going to have a party. Sort of a double celebration. 
Uh, today's my birthday. And me and my brother Mark also celebrating a successful business deal we just made. We're gonna have lots of fun, gonna be lots to eat, lots of drink, plenty of pretty girls. Y'all come, yeah? I wish that punk Donegan had pushed me that much for Now, nah, simmer down, Nick. That's exactly what they wanted you to do. Must be some way to get them Donegans back to Stockton. It's gonna be tough. They got the whole town behind them. You saw that? Yeah, but why? They gotta know they're outlaws. Well, they know. They've been bought. It's that simple. A killer isn't a killer anymore, as long as you can build a nice new school. I don't know about you, but I'm a little tired. Think I'll take a little nap. Get out, boy. You think you know the Dunnigans? Well, you don't. You're in a family from miles around that don't owe them a lot. You practice and be murderer like they are? They ain't murderers. The Dunnigans send you? No, I came alone. Besides, I wasn't going to kill you. Just wanted to scare you out. So we wouldn't hurt your friends? They're everybody's friends. You'd back shoot them just as soon as look at them. You rich ranchers are all like that. You listen to me, boy. I'm gonna tell you something. We're exactly the same as anybody else. Especially when outlaws try to kill our friends. You're a liar. They never shot anyone. They're good people. They take from those that got too much and give to folks that got too little. He believes every word of that, Nick. No sense taking him to the marshal. Well, we better get him to the doctor. He's got quite a lump there. Come on, boy. I don't need no doctor. You don't need a doctor. At least not the kind I am. I've never yet been able to cure anybody of outright stupidity. You don't even need a bandage. Now, just keep your head out of the dirt and your nose out of other people's business. Notice you two are still here. Is something bothering you? A few things. For example, number one, what made you think that boy was doing something he shouldn't have been doing? Well, I've been around here a while. He didn't try to use that old gun on you, did he? He had it. He didn't get a chance to use it. Well, it was decent of you not to hurt him any more than you did. Now, that boy's suffering the worst case of hero worship I've ever seen. He thinks the Dunnigans are the greatest thing since Robin Hood. You realize he's not alone. You too, Doc? I know what they've done for the people of this county. You didn't answer my question, Doc. Are you a Dunnigan worshiper, too? No. I owe him quite a bit, as does everyone else around here. In that room, you'll find the finest medical equipment anywhere. The money for it didn't come from my patients. No. It came from people like us. I've helped a lot of folks with it. 
Saved quite a few lives, I'd say. As for the Dunnigans, oh, I know what they are. They're outlaws. They may be guilty of many things, including those that you accuse them of. But, but you just don't care. You don't care. Just so long as you get everything you need as a doctor, you don't care. I care. I try not to think about it too much, that's all. This is a town of decent people, whether you believe it or not. At least I believe them to be decent. Well, I don't believe it, Doc. Any town that would protect two killers can't be anything but rotten clear through. You're wrong about that. I've known most of them many years. Brought a great many into this world. I have considerable affection for them. So let me tell you once again, forget your mission of vengeance and leave. You've lost two men, you say, and I'm sorry. But many more men will be lost if you start something here which you know you will never be able to finish. Now, what you're saying is either we leave or one of them nice, decent citizens of yours just might kill us. That's exactly what I mean. They're the same as people have always been. If you try to destroy their gods, they'll annihilate you. There's not a thing in this world that can stop them. Where's the saloon? Could buy you a drink. Well, that's not a very good idea. You got a better one? Well, we could go over to the bank and visit our stolen gold. Ten to one, it's in that vault. You know, I'm beginning to think the only way to handle this whole thing is to walk into that saloon there, gun in hand, and take them, kidnap them. Yeah, that makes real good sense. Well, that's the only way I can figure to get them out of town. Now, Nick, there's got to be another way. What would you say would be the best reason to get them out of town? Something to steal. A stagecoach full of gold, a train, hope. Cash. In our pockets? Yeah. Lots of it. Come on. Mother? Mother? Yes? Did you get the quinine? Yes. The doctor said to give it to me every four hours. Mm -hmm. Here's a telegram from the boy. How's Jerry? Oh, much better, much better. Oh, listen to this. Need 5,000 cash immediately to purchase prize breathing stock. Please telegraph money, Sunflower Bank. Breeding stock? Hmm. I heard Nick tell Jared we didn't need any breeding stock now. Well, even if we do, they wouldn't have to pay cash for us. But the telegram says, Need 5,000 immediately to purchase prize breathing. Maybe it's for something else. Do they say anything about the Dunnigan brother? No, no. It... That just may be for something else. friends from Stockton. Hey, you're mighty early for the party, boys. They're still decorating inside. Well, we didn't exactly come for that. We're on our way out of town. Oh, really? Well, I hope those few hot words we had before aren't the cause for your departure. No, no, no. Forget that. We got a big spread. Got to get to running it. Right now, we're mighty short on breeding stock. Here, there's some fine horses in a town called Spinner. That's not far from here, is it? Yeah, it's about 50 miles. You take the North Fork just outside of town. Yeah, they got some mighty fine horses up in Spinner. A bit on the expensive side, though. 
No, we can handle it. Oh, good. I just uh, thought I'd warn you. Well, that's mighty kind of you. Look, you stood us to drinks before. We'd like to return the favor. Oh, no. You don't buy drinks. Not as long as you're in this town. Drinks on me. Come on in. Folks have been working for hours. I asked them not to, but they wanted to do it for old Davy. Hi, Davy. How does it look? Why, it looks beautiful. Just lovely. Sit down, gentlemen. Olga, honey, would you get us a bottle and some glasses, please? Mark, come on down from there. Come on over here. Guess what? Our good friends from Stockton ain't gonna be able to stay for the party tonight. They're gonna ride on up to Spinner to get some good breeding stock. Oh, it's a shame. Well, can't you stay over till tomorrow? I got Olga working on getting a couple of nice some girls for you. Don't know, honey? Uh, sure. Uh, thanks just the same. We thought we'd travel a little while tonight. Get an early start in the morning. Miss the heat of the day that way. Well, that makes sense. Well, one for the road, as they say. Cheers. You know, my brother and I, I guess we kind of made a little mistake in judgment. Oh, no harm done. I don't know what my brother means is, uh, well, we weren't aware of the fact you had so many good friends in this town. Nice, decent, respectable people. Well, with so many friends, we can't be all bad now, can we? <laughs> well, I'm glad you came to that conclusion. Oh. We might do a thing now and again that uh, society frowns on, but uh, killing? Not the Dunnigans. Except maybe in self-defense, you understand. Yeah. Well, I guess we'd better be going, then. Thanks for the drink, gentlemen. Pleasure. Uh, before we go, I'd like to give you boys a little word of advice. Stay away from Stockton, huh? Well, all right, if you say so. Let's go, Nick. I hear it's a nice place, though. Midnight. Not a sign of him. Said five thousand dollars wasn't enough bait. Either that or the Dunnigans are smarter than we figured. Oh, come on. We better answer the back door. Anytime you're ready. Forget about it. They're not coming. Still got time to get back before that party breaks up. What are you talking about? Uh, you know that lousy idea you had this afternoon about kidnapping him? Doesn't sound too much like a lousy idea now, does it? Like that's all we got left. Let's have at it. Too many left. 
left inside. Thank you. Where is everybody? Ooh, I am hungry. I sure am hungry. Olga, isn't anybody hungry besides me? Oh, the fire's out in the kitchen stove, Daisy. Well, now, you just light that fire right up again, Olga, honey. How about some nice, juicy steak and onion? Oh, that'd be just great. And then maybe we can eat up in your room privately, huh? <sighs> If you want to. That's a nice girl. I'm going home. If I know this party was going to break up so early, I'd have gone out and got some money from some friends. $5,000 worth. <laughs> yeah? And you would have walked into a nice fat trap, too. You just see if you could make it to your horse without falling all over yourself. <laughs> Alright, kid. I'll go with you, Mr. Donegan. You don't need nobody going with me. Mr. Donegan? Mr. Donegan? Are you sure you're all right? I mean, I can at least help you saddle up your horse. I told you I don't need nobody going along with me. All right, Mr. Donegan. I just don't want you to fall off and get hurt, maybe. What's the matter there, boy? It's your brother, Mr. Donegan. I can't hardly stand up. Oh, you'd be surprised how much old Mark can hold. He'd be all right, son. I told you, he'd be all right. Just the same. I'm going to see you get home, okay? Well, suit yourself. <laughs> well, that's half the battle. Come on. The other half, I'm really going to enjoy. Now, boy, who's back? The Barclays. I've just seen them sneaking around the livery. They must have jumped your brother inside. You sure it was them? I saw them, Mr. Dunnigan, honest. They're watching out front, waiting for you. Yeah. Well, we go all the way around. We get to the barn from the alley. Come on, Dunnigan. Come out of there. Running out of patience. And time. It'll be sun up soon. 
you settle for one, Dunnigan? Oh, no, no, no. We're gonna bring them both back. I'm going in there and drag him out right there. He's still in there. Maybe. Maybe he left before we ever got here. There's only one way to find out. His brother. Be right back. Hurry right back. I feel my hay fever coming up. <laughs> yeah. All right, Mark? Yeah. Jerry, shut that door. Now, listen, Mark. They gotta come back here after you. And as soon as they step inside, we'll cut them in half. Well, something's going on in the barn. The door was just being closed as I got there. I think it must have gotten loose. No, he couldn't have. Somebody must be in there with him. Well, we just best draw him out. Come on. If you start yelling, you'll draw this whole town out. That's a chance we'll have to take. Why don't you get over there and cover me? Dunningham! Open the door, throw your gun out, and come out with your hands raised high. You got 30 seconds left. Or we'll set fire to the place and smoke you out. Time's almost up. Hey, boy, boy, just be quiet, boy. Now, listen, Mark. I'll go out there first and draw their fire. When you see them, you try to get them with your first couple of shots. If you don't, just hit the ground and stay there. By that time, there'll be enough people out there that chew them to pieces. For killing the kid, you understand? All right, now go on. Get over there and kick that door open. Let him go! Go! All right, all right, you want to go, go. He's gunned the boy down, Marshal. I think they killed him. That's a lie. Give me your gun. Oh, now, Marshal. I, I said, give me your gun. Yours, too. Somebody get Doc Landrum. Stretcher. Marshal, they came back to get us, and that poor Jerry got in the way, and they shot him in the back. You're a liar. Marshal, if you'll check those guns, you'll find one shot fired. It's in his shoulder. Uh, Jerry, now take it easy. Take it easy. Fly back. 
Donegan? Yes. What'd you do with Mr. Donegan? I've always been your friend. I helped you. Why'd you shoot me in the back? Why? Well, the boy's hurt. He don't know what he's saying. Well, I saw him do it with my own two eyes. No. Mr. Donegan did it. The one at all of you think it was the Barclays. But he's the one who shot me. In the back. Mr. Donegan. My friend. One shot, that's all. Well, Marshal, you know them two came here to get us, and that's all. They didn't care how they did it. They even shot a kid. Now, you know we wouldn't do that. We looked after Jerry for years. This gun's empty. Well, I had to defend myself. Yeah. Boy, gonna make it, Doc? I don't know yet. If the boy dies, you'll stand trial for murder right here in Sunflower. If Jerry lives, I'll turn the Dunnigans over to you and I'll ride with you to Stockton. Right. All right, you two, let's go. Oh, no, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Listen, what's the matter with you people? What's the matter with you? You all gonna stand here and let this happen to the Dunnigans? You owe us. You all owe us. Ain't a man standing here that don't owe us. Sam, Sam, wait a minute. Listen, come here. Come, come here. Come here. Stay here. Listen to me. Listen. Who gave you the money for your wife's operations? Two of them, huh? And you, if you wouldn't have made it through last winter, you and your wife and your five kids, if it hadn't been for the money that me and my brother Mark gave to you. And how about the church and the schoolhouse? And when we had that drought, where are you people going? You come back here, I'm talking to you! Done again. You come back here, I'm talking to you! Done again. You hear me? I'm talking to you, come back here! Would you mind holding that down to a shout? Well, I just wanted to know whether you got to the post office today or not. No, I didn't, but Jared did. Oh. Jared! Oh, someday you're going to shatter all the windows to say nothing of my eardrums. I just wanted to know whether I got a letter from Marshall Moore's sunflower. Oh. Hey, Heath. It's from Marshall Moore. Seems Jerry Fry's gonna be all right. Well, he wasn't such a bad kid. Just had a bad case of hero worship on the wrong hero. Oh, by the way, did you say Jared went to the post office? Well, is that so unusual? What are you doing out of bed? You're walking. I might even manage a small waltz with the right partner. Sorry, my dance program's all filled up. Well, now he looks almost as good as new, doesn't he? He sure does. Well, that being the case, I have a few legal chores for you, Jared. Number one, I just purchased 50 acres of land from San Woodfield. I'm going to stock it with Herefords. And I want you to sue Holt County. Holt County? They gave us 50 acres of land free on the condition that we would put our winery there. Well, the land turned out not as free as we thought. It seems that the taxes are twice as high as the original price of the land. And where are you going? Back to bed. But I... Doctor said to take it easy for a little while. I think I'll just heed his advice. I just... <laughs> Will there be anything else, Mr. Barkley? No, thanks, Charles. Jared, look. What? Well, it would appear we're alone. Well, it's past 10 o'clock, Mr. Barkley. Well, it can't be. Don't worry about it, Miss Randall. You two just take your time. Thank you, Charles.
Do you know what this train is? No, tell me. Something out of time and place. It's like traveling in another dimension. These last four days didn't happen. None of this is real. You're wrong, Beth. It's real. Very real. You know, it kind of frightens me when I think that I plan to stay in Washington for another day. I missed this train. What made you change your mind? I don't know. All I know is that you're here and so am I. I think my whole life has been changed around. I think I knew this was going to happen the first moment I laid eyes on you. You sure that's not the champagne? No, it's not the champagne. I would like to make a toast. To the Coastal and Western Railroad. Here's to that. Denver coming up, Miss Randall. Randall. Oh. Here you are, Charles. I'll get your change. That's all right, keep it. Well, thank you, sir. Charles. Yes, sir? I want you to take my baggage out of the next car and put it off the train. But I thought you were going on to Stockton, Mr. Barkley. I've changed my mind. Every trip counts, all. So. Jared back yet? No, no, not yet. When do you expect him? Well, now, that is a very interesting question. We uh, got a letter from him just the other day from Denver. It seems that. Cass Hyatt. That's right. The governor gave him a pardon, didn't you know? No, I didn't. Jared knew. I thought he told you. Probably oh, didn't want to worry us. What's he doing back in Stockton? This was his home before I went to prison. Well, I hope his home is the only reason for being here. Yeah. So I told Kimball that we'd hold off making any decision till Jared got back. Is that all right with you? 
Well, I guess it's gonna have to be. I just don't get it, what Jared's doing in Denver all this time. Oh, I'm sure he'll tell us all about it when he comes back. Well, now, I wouldn't be too sure. He may keep that a secret, too. Well, what's that supposed to mean? Well, he never did tell us that Cass Hyatt had been pardoned. Cass Hyatt? So I'm in town just this morning. He's out of Quentin. Well, you don't think he still holds a grudge against Jared, do you? I don't know. Hyatt said that Jared framed him just to make a name for himself and swore to get even with him. It was the last thing he ever did. Seven years is a long time. The man changes. I hope so. It's Jared! <sighs> Why didn't you let us know you were coming home tonight? Well, well I was going to, but I'm lost. How are you? Well, what in Denver took you so long? Well, I guess the uh, best explanation is for you to meet her yourself. Her? Mother, this is Beth. How do you do? Hello, Mrs. Barclay. Uh, it's my brother, Nick. Howdy. Brother Heath. How do you do? Well, I guess there's no other way to say it. Beth and I are married. Married? You don't mean it. Well, where? When? Three days ago in Denver. Well, welcome to the Barclay Branch. Thank you, Mrs. Barclay. Thank Forgive us for not sending you a telegram, but Jared wanted well, a surprise. Come all he sure did. Well, tell. We, uh, we met on the train from Washington. Beth was on her way to Denver to teach school. I got off the train, and there was Jared. Now, Mother, Beth wanted to wait and be married here, but I didn't want to give her a chance to change her mind. Well, now, you should have let us know why. We'd have thrown you a party that all of California had never forgotten. But don't think you did us out of a celebration. Nick, let's get that champagne. You bet. You see, I warned you about this, too. <laughs> Come in. I have so many questions to ask, I don't know where to begin. Oh, my goodness. I just thought of something. What's that? I'm a mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> How do you think that looks, sir? Oh, it looks fine, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Barclay. Well, what about the flowers? Do you think they're all right? Lovely. Well, I don't know. I, I just... Mother! Don't... Nick, don't shout like well, that. Why? Why? Beth and Jared are still asleep. Asleep at 10 o'clock in the morning? I'll go get it. No, 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 no. You, you get it. Oh, yes. No, Silas, you get it. You yes. hold, please. I'll get it. Well, well, I've never seen you like this before. You're as jumpy as a frog with a hiccup. I've never had a daughter-in-law in the house before. Well, now, what is so special about that? If you don't know, there's no use in my explaining it. Besides, wait until you're a mother and... <laughs> it's Miss Brady, ma'am. Tell her I'll be with her in a few minutes. What? Yes. what? Well, well, she's going to help us with the reception. A reception? When? For Beth and Jared, Friday evening. Or did I decide on Saturday? Oh, well, it doesn't make any difference. There's so much to do. Invitations to get out, and the house has to be... I do wish Audra were here. Well, now, Philadelphia's not that far. I'm sure she'll make it. Mother! Quiet! Nick! What? Oh. Who was at the door? Keep it down. What? Well, with all this noise, it doesn't matter. Where are you going with that? I'm taking it up to Beth and Jared. Well, they're not there. What? Well, they sneaked out about an hour ago and said they were going into town. They told me to tell you. But I guess I forgot. Oh. <laughs> well, madam, this is where I slave. Jared Barkley, attorney at law. You better be careful. Stockton is a conservative town. People will talk. Hello, Hyatt. You don't seem very surprised to see me. I'm not. I heard over a month ago the governor was going to give you a pardon. Oh? I'm surprised you didn't tell him he was making a mistake. I'm an attorney, not a judge. No hard feelings there? Suppose you tell me. None here. Who is that man? Nobody important. The important thing is how you're going to change my office all around once you've seen it. And then tomorrow we'll go into town and buy you a new dress for the reception. Would you like that? Yes, thank you. I would. Here. Is this enough? Oh, 
Fine, thank you. Well, would you like a taste? Yes. That's one of Jared's favorite dishes. That's good. Mm. You know, when I think of all the things I have to learn about Jared, they're the little things as well as the important ones. I wonder if we shouldn't have waited. Oh, no, Beth, no. You did what was right for both of you. You loved each other and trusted each other. However, if there's anything that husband of yours won't tell you about himself, you let me know. Do you mean that? Yes. Who is Cass Hyatt? Jared and I met him when we were in town yesterday. There was something about the way he looked at Jared that frightened me. I asked about him and Jared wouldn't tell me anything. Well, there's nothing to tell, really. It happened a long time ago and... Beth! Where is everybody? Beth! Mr. Barclay. Ah, there you are, young lady. Well, now, what are you doing home at this hour? Have you forgotten you have a wife to support? And have you forgotten that we have a date? We do? Didn't I tell you? No. Oh, well, I just have. Well, where are we going? That, my darling, is a secret. Well, give me five minutes to stay. I'll give you five. You'll take 15 and be ready in 30. Mm -hmm. Somehow I get the feeling that uh, you're very much in love with that girl. Now, whatever gave you that idea? Mm. Jared, it's a beautiful spot. Do you really think so? Mm, yes. Come on. You know, ever since I was old enough to scramble up into a saddle, I've been coming up here. When I was... Uh, when I was about ten, I used to come up here and cry whenever I thought the world was being mean to me. <laughs> and when I was about 20, I used to come up here and write poetry. Some of the worst poetry you've ever read in your life. <laughs> I think that's when I must have named it Isla del Cielo. Island of the skies. Jared, that's beautiful. Our island, Beth, if you want it. Ours? Build our home here. Watch our children struggle and grow. Probably cry a lot. Maybe someday read some of their bad poetry. Yeah, what's this? I hope those are tears of happiness. Please, let's not have a big house. All right. And promise me one thing. What? Let's build a house without a roof, so we don't have to shut out all of this lovely sky. A house with no roof. I'll remember that. Jared, look at all of these lovely flowers. <laughs> My God, Beth! You've been after me for two days now. Asking me the same questions and getting the same answers. Sit down, I, I won't sit down. You've got no right to hold me like this. You threatened Jared Berkeley. It was seven years ago. I've forgotten all about it. Besides, it's got nothing to do with Barclay's wife. You could have killed her by mistake. Sure, I could have killed her. Been anywhere near where she was killed, but I wasn't. I told you where I was. Now, you check it out. 
I checked it. Neither you charge me with killing that woman and do it right now. I'm going to walk out of here. Cash hired. That's all right. We understand. Jared here? What? I'm here, Fred. Jared, I'm glad. I, uh, I wanted to explain to you about Hyatt. Has he talked yet? Well, he didn't confess, if that's what you mean. That's exactly what I mean. Jared, I had to let him go. I had no other choice. What do you mean, you had no choice? Hyatt says he was in French camp. He went up on the morning boat. He's a liar. Uh, I checked out his story. There are people up there who saw him there. He could have gotten a horse at the livery stable and ridden back here he in an hour. He didn't get a horse at the livery stable. Well, then he I took one up there earlier through. and had it waiting for There's him. There's no proof of that, Jared. Now, Hyatt is right. If he hadn't made that threat against you years ago, I wouldn't have had any reason to bring him in in the first place. I had to let him go. You're a lawyer. You should understand this. All I understand is that my wife is dead and that Cass Hyatt murdered her. Could have been an accident. Somebody out potting rabbits got scared after they came. You really believe that? I'm trying to tell you it's possible. All you're trying to do is excuse yourself for letting a cold-blooded killer free. Jared. It's all right, Victoria. Jared, I'm sorry. And that's the end of it. There's nothing more I can do. Well, there's something more I can do. No, Jared. Where did he go? He's gone. He left town right after I released him. Are you going to tell me where he went? I don't know, and I wouldn't tell you if I did. I'll find him. Now, Jared, you listen to me. I didn't know Beth very well, but I do know revenge is not what she would have wanted. Beth loved you very much. Don't destroy the memory of her love by destroying yourself. Jared, if Pat Hyatt did kill Beth... He killed her. Oh, 
All right, say he did, and you kill him, then what? I'll turn myself into the nearest lawman. And ruin your life. Oh, the life I had went into that grave this morning. That's not true. You think it is. You believe it. But it is not true. Oh, Jared, I know the emptiness you must be feeling. But killing Cass Hyatt is not going to fill that emptiness. It will still be there. There's no use talking about there it. There has to be. Somehow I have to make you understand that you're turning your back on everything you ever stood for as a man and as a lawyer. The things Beth loved you for and married you for. Let me handle this. You go on upstairs, Mother. Please. Now you hear me. I'm not here to argue with you or plead with you. I'm here to say one thing. If you want to get out of this room, you're going to have to go through me. Oh, Jared. <laughs> Close enough now. Not just yet, Chad. What, uh, what, what can I do for you? Do you know a man named Cass Hyatt? Well, yeah. Where'd he go? Why, I, uh... Now, don't lie to me, Chad. I know he left town today, and I know he didn't ride out. He didn't go by stage or boat. Now, that leaves your train. Where'd he go? Uh, Mr. Barkley, the sheriff told me not to say anything. All right. train out of here this afternoon, the 315 South. That goes through Lathrop, Salida, Modesto. I, I'm not going to tell you. Lathrop, Salida, Modesto, Winton, Grass Falls, Fry's Junction sent. Fry's Junction. I had had a brother who lived there. That's where he went, isn't it? Fry's Junction. N no. That's what I thought. Chasing you, boy? I just saw Jared Barkley. Barkley? He rode into Rock Point while I was loading supplies. You sure it was Barkley? I recognized him from seeing him at your trial in Stockton. You lied to me, didn't you? No. You killed Barkley's wife. I didn't. That's why he's after you. Cliff, you gotta believe me. I didn't kill that woman. Barkley thinks I did, but I didn't. Get out, Cass. Huh? The only time you ever come here is when you're in trouble. I'm fed up with you and your lies. Now you saddle up and get out of here whilst you got the chance. Now, Cliff, you gotta help me. The two of us could take Barkley. We'd be within our rights if we did. Did you hear what I said? I'm innocent, I tell you. Get out!
I say it here, Mr. Barkley. I, I saw you ride into town. I, I warned Cass. He rode out of here about oh, an hour ago. You can see for yourself. You mean he killed him, don't you? Cass is my brother. I don't care what he's done. You got no right to come in here taking the law into your own hands. You can't teach. Oh. Now I'm going to ask you just once. Where did he go? I won't tell you. Where? I won't tell you. Please. Please don't. Where did he go? South. South where? I don't know. I just told him to saddle up and get out. He went south. That's the truth. I, I swear it. Cass said he didn't kill your wife. He's a liar. Doesn't worry you that you might be wrong? Not a bit. Then what makes you any better than him? Bottle, honey. It dries the prairie wolf, and I'm beginning to howl.
morning, Mr. Barclay. Dr. Saxton. This is Zach Fane, the sheriff. We found your name in your wallet. Where am I? Rimfire. You rode in yesterday, Mr. Barclay. If what you were doing could be called riding. Doc says somebody tried to part your hair with a 3030. What happened? That doesn't concern you, Sheriff. Now, now. You should stay put, Mr. Barkley. You should rest for a couple of days at least. I haven't got a couple of days. Well, now, what's your hurry, Mr. Barkley? And if you're going to try to tell me it don't concern me, don't bother. You're in rimfire. In rimfire, everything concerns me. Is that right? You see, I'm just a natural-born snoop. And a worrier. I worry a lot. Especially about hombres who almost get their heads blown off. Now, you tell me what happened. All right, Sheriff. I'm after the man who murdered my wife. When I find him, I'm gonna kill him. If he did what you say he did, how come the law ain't after him? The law can't do anything about him. So what you've done is sort of appointed yourself to take the law's place. That's right. Who is the man, Mr. Barclay? His name is Hyatt. Cass Hyatt. You know him? He rode in yesterday, too. He got himself liquored up, started an argument in a poker game, went for his gun. What happened? Nobody got hurt. But I arrested him anyway for disturbing the peace. He's in jail. So you see, you ain't gonna get a chance to kill him for at least 30 days. Rest a while? Do you? No. night. You're in here for 30 days. You can't keep me in here without a trial. You want a trial, you'll have one. As soon as the circuit judge comes around again. When will that be? A couple of months. I got some news for you, Hyde. For me? Something that might take the itch out of wanting to get out of here so fast. What is it? A man named Barclay's in town. I bet you thought you got rid of him, didn't you? Did he, uh, tell you why he was after me? Says he wants to kill you. Well, what are you gonna do about it? Me? You're the law. Well, now, that's true. But on the other hand, Barclay's just saying he's going to kill you isn't a crime. He means it. I think he does. When I told him he couldn't get at you for 30 days, I thought that might take some of the steam out of him. 
Barty did. Not a bit. The man's cool as ice all the way through. 30 days, 30 years. He'll be out there waiting for you. I didn't kill his wife. I didn't kill his wife. I sort of figure you for a liar, Hyatt. But it don't make any difference. You're talking to the wrong man. Doc couldn't keep you corralled, huh, Mr. Barkley? I want to talk to you, Sheriff. Sure. Sure, Mr. Barkley, sit down. You know, I used to do some marshalling up your way once. A little mining camp called Hirensburg, up river from Stockton. You know what? We used to get a lot of riffraff there, just like here. Only that don't trouble me much. I ride a town with a light rain. I don't much care who a man is, where he comes from, what he's done somewhere else. Just so long as he behaves himself in rimfire. Saddle up and ride, Mr. Barkley. I don't want you to misunderstand me. I know how you feel. Do you? That's right. I lost a woman once. The first Mrs. Fane. She was shot and killed by a drunken cowhand who were on the town. I was in Fort Bannister. I was a young kid deputy. It was a long time ago. God knows I wanted to kill him. And I couldn't tell you to this day why I didn't. But I didn't. Instead, I arrested him. I guarded him, I fed him, I sat with him through his trial. And the hardest thing I ever did in my life was to unlock that cell door and set him free. The judge dismissed the charge against him. Where's the moral to your story, Sheriff? No moral, Mr. Barkley. No moral. No point. Not even an ending. Just sort of faded away. Maybe you loved your woman more than I did. Go home, Mr. Barkley. No. All right. What do you want to talk to me about? How much money do you make? <laughs> Not much. How much? Fifty a month and all I can steal. Six hundred dollars a year. How would you like to make two years' salary in just five minutes? You didn't have that when the doc and I went through your wallet. There's a bank in this town. What do I have to do for that, Mr. Barkley? Turn Hyde loose? That's right. I already told you. He's in here for 30 days. He hasn't been convicted of anything. Well, now, that's true. But we do things a little different here in Rimfire, Mr. Barkley. Seeing as how we're off the beaten path, we don't see the circuit judge too often. So a man usually serves his sentence before he has a trial. loose. 
I'll say one thing for you, Barkley. You sure know how to tempt a man. No. I don't want any trouble in my town. You've already got trouble. It doesn't matter whether it happens now or 30 days from now, it's gonna happen. I'll be waiting outside. Barkley! If you kill Hyatt, I'm going to have to arrest you for murder. And if you try to resist, I'm going to have to kill you. Either way, you're going to be a dead man. Turn him loose. You go. You're free. No. Get out. Oh, look, you can't do this. Get out. You can't do this. Get in. Just a minute. Wait a minute. Put it on. No. No. He'll kill me. Put it on. Or I'll throw you out in the street without it. Why are you doing this? Maybe because you remind me just a little bit of a drunken cowhand I used to know. Now, you put that on and get out of here. Listen to me. You got the wrong man. Draw your gun. That's the truth. It doesn't matter to me whether you draw or not. I'll kill you where you stand. to me. I hit her instead. Now you gotta protect me! I'll kill you with my bare hands. Shoot through me to get to him, Jared. Sheriff. Charges against my brother? None that I can think of. Here. This belongs to him.
I saw the sheriff when I was in town this afternoon. They sentenced Cass Hyatt. They gave him life. Don't feel cheated, Jared. I don't. All I feel is shame. I discovered something inside myself that I never knew existed. I pray to God I never find it again. But just forget about it. All of it. All of it? No, not Beth. She was part of it. No, Jared, no. Not that part. Not the ugliness. You smile, Diego. Because you are a, a girl. And this amuses you? It does when you talk of leading a raid as important as this. It is a job for a man. Are you forgetting Santa Lucia? No. Or Carboca? Or the ambush of the Federalists at Rio Blanco? Did I not ride as hard and fight as well as any man who was there? But you did not lead. If you came face to face with Montejo, what would you do? <laughs> Mm. What would I do? What would you do, Diego? Suppose I am Monteja, and I am prepared to guard the Carlotta necklace with my life. What would you do? What could I do with a gun pointed at me? <laughs> <laughs> You will lead the raid. You will lead. <laughs> you have a walking arsenal for a sister. That is true. And don't you ever forget it, Mateo Mio. A toast to the revolution. A la revolution. Push a toast to Miranda. Diego, wait. Julio brings news from the Rancho Monteja. Don Ramon has gone to California and he has taken the Carlota necklace with him. Where in California? To the Rancho Gringo Friends, the Hacendados named Barclay. We will go after him. Yes, she's right. 
We can buy guns with that necklace and more important food for the people in the areas we control. If we don't feed them, we'll lose their support. I'll go with you. Thank you, Mateo. Hermano mio? I will go. We should have three more men. You pick them, Mateo. We'll ride tonight. like that, Don Ramon, will only get you an invitation to stay longer. Ah, oh, how I wish I could. It has been a long time since I spent a more enjoyable four days. But I must travel out to San Francisco. Well, you could spend some time with us on your way back from San Francisco. Gracias. Uh, unfortunately, I must return without unnecessary delay. The situation in Sonora being what it is. Just what is that situation? Chaotic. Revolution is rampant. The Basadas rebels gain control of more villages every day. The government seems powerless to stop them. What about the report that Emilio Basadas was killed? It is true. He was killed at Cerro Cibute a year ago. But his followers carry on. Yes, Silas. Is this what you wanted, sir? Ah, yes. Gracias. And now I have a favor to ask of you, my friends. Oh, what a lovely bar. Ah, oh, but wait, senor. Oh, that's beautiful. Heath, Heath, come here. Good evening, Don Ramon. Good evening, Heath. Boy, howdy, that must be worth a fortune. $250,000. It has been in the Monteja family for three generations. I had to bring it with me because I heard rumors that the rebels were planning to attack my hacienda and steal it. But I am reluctant to carry such a fortune with me any farther than I have. Which brings me to the favor I would ask. I wish to leave the necklace here with you for safekeeping while I'm in San Francisco. You have a safe? Yes, we do. Then I'm sure it will be perfectly secure. All right, Don Ramon, we'll keep it for you. Gracias, senora. Muchas gracias. And now, if you will excuse me, I shall retire. I must be on my way very early in the morning. Buenas noches, amigos. Eh? Senora. Miranda Basadas. Basadas? And this is my brother. And you know what we want.
Where is the necklace? He doesn't have it. Bring him inside. Mateo, don't waste your time on that imperialist pig. He left the necklace with his gringo friends. Let's raid the rancho and get it. No. Yes. Oh, Miranda, don't be so foolish. Raiding the Barclay Ranch and getting the necklace is one thing. Getting back to the border with it is another. Now, our only chance of making it is to get the necklace without a fight. And how do we do that? Our friend is going to help us. I will not do anything to help you. I think you will. Oh. Buenos dias, senor. Hello. I am looking for the Rancho Barkley. Well, now, that is the best news I've heard in a long time. This is it. I'm Nick Barkley. Oh, of course. I recognize you now by my uncle's description. Your uncle. Oh, forgive me. I am Miranda Monteja. Ramon Monteja's niece. Well, now, what do you know about that? Your uncle was here just a couple of days ago. Yes, I know. I just saw him in San Francisco. Oh. I have been there for several weeks visiting friends. Well, what are you doing in Stockton? He sent me. He's not feeling well. Oh, right. Oh, nothing I... serious. He just did not feel up to traveling. Uh -huh. He sent me to get the briefcase he left with you. Oh, well, He uh... gave me this note authorizing you to give it to me. Go on inside and meet the rest of the family, huh? Thank you. Um, I cannot stay too long. I have to catch the evening train back to San Francisco. Oh, well, that's the worst news I've heard in a long time. Oh, oh right. Watch yourself now. There you are. Huh. Right this way. Somewhere here, there's a letter we got from Montea last... There it is. What do you think? That's Montea's handwriting all the way around. I knew that girl was too beautiful to be a thief. I'm sorry you won't be meeting my daughter, Audra. She's visiting friends out of town. Oh. Well, here we are. <sighs> Where is the necklace? Get it for you first thing Monday morning. I don't understand. Well, we thought a necklace worth a quarter of a million dollars deserved better than a wall safe, so we put it in the vault in the Stockton Bank. And this being Saturday afternoon. What does that have to do with it? Locked up tight until Monday morning. Well, there must be something you can do. Oh, I'm afraid not. Looks like you're going to have to stay here. Oh, that I, I cannot do that. Uh, you see, I'm supposed to be on the evening train for San Francisco. Uncle Ramon is waiting for me. Well, we'll send him a telegram explaining oh, no, the situation. Oh, no, no, I, I cannot do that. You see, I came only with the clothes I am wearing. Oh, Audra's got lots of dresses you can wear. No, I, 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 I cannot impose. I will go to the hotel. Hotel? That's ridiculous. You can stay up in Audra's room. Well, Nick is right. We wouldn't think of letting you go to a hotel. We'll, uh... Yes, I, I'll, I'll show you to your oh, room. No, 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 no. Now, don't you bother. I know how much you enjoy having your tea. I'll take Miss Monte upstairs. I'll have Silas fix you a nice hot bath, and you can rest a little bit before dinner. of Don Roman, you know. Mm -hmm. A very beautiful me. Yeah. What is that I smell? What? Oh, that. You think it's uh, too much? No, not if you stay up wind. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, I think I better go up and see if she's ready. Uh, oh, uh, buenas noches. Buenas tardes. Uh, uh, oh, here. Buenas tardes. Oh, 
Won't you sit down? Senorita, would you do us the honor of saying grace? Bendecir la mesa, da gracias. Uh, um... Nick? Um... Thank you, O oh Lord, for the bounty you place before us. Amen. I thought you might like us to take you to church. Church? No. Very well. Senora, I would like to go for a ride this morning. Of course. You'll find some of Order's riding things in that closet. I'll have a horse saddled for you. Gracias. I feel as though I almost insulted her by asking. You know where she slept last night? On the floor. Oh, <laughs> Mother, you must be wrong. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, maybe, maybe she hurt her back or something. You know, it's more comfortable to sleep on the floor when you hurt you. Nick, she doesn't behave like the niece of an aristocrat. You saw her at the dinner table. Well, she uh, may be a little more different than we expected, but... Well, I'm sure it's nothing to worry about. Come on, let's go. We're going to be late. Mateo. Did you get the necklace? No. What happened? The Barclays put it in a vault in a bank in Stockton. They cannot get it for me until tomorrow morning. But they believe you're Montea's niece. Good. Good? What is good about it? I've got to go back and be polite to those wealthy gringo swine. Ugh. It turned my stomach. It'll never. <laughs> Silas, would you put the buggy away, please? Yes, Mrs. Barclay. Uh, Silas, has uh, Miss Montea returned from a ride yet? Not yet, Mr. Nick. Ah, she's been gone almost three hours. Well, she'll be all right. Well, I better change and have a look myself. Do you know where she went? Uh, she was heading east. I watched. Mm -hmm. I might have known. I better not go any farther. It's not my country anymore. What a true friend to humanity you are. To give up your own land, to, to fight for people who are not your own. That makes you very special.
Well, senorita, this is a pleasant surprise. I thought you went to church. No, no, no. I got home about an hour ago. Oh. Good thing we met up, though. There's something I want to talk to you about. Oh, is something wrong? Oh, no, no. Nothing wrong. Just that, well, I got to thinking about you going to San Francisco all by yourself with that necklace. Well, if something should go wrong. Oh. Huh. But nothing will go wrong. No, no, no. You can't tell. We've had a lot of train robberies lately. And, uh, well, I think it's best that I go with you. Go with me? Yeah, we can... Uh, Stop at the bank, pick up the necklace, and still have time to catch the 910. No. Why? Well, I uh, I do appreciate the offer, Senor, but, uh, well, I don't want to inconvenience you. Oh, no, you. no, there's no inconvenience at all. It's, uh, well, I, I'm due for a vacation. I'll tell you what. We can have dinner together in San Francisco. I know a little place up on Russian Hill. Um, well, I cannot do that. Why? Well, I just can't. Are you uh, spoken for? Yeah, engaged. You mean betrothed? Yeah. Yes, I am betrothed. Oh, well, uh, that's too bad. Who's the lucky fella? Oh, he's um, just a young man in, uh, in Mexico City. Mexico City, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, now that is strange. The minute I thought it was that uh, gringo I saw you kissing a few minutes ago. Now, why don't we stop play-acting, huh? You're no more Mantea's niece than I am. Who are you? Look in on her again uh, in the morning. Thank you, Doctor. Night, Doc. Would you lock up, please, Nick? Yeah, right.
Surrender! Think you're going? Uh oh. Stay away from me. Well, now that was real cute. Get over there. We left off this afternoon. Who are you? I don't have to answer any questions. I have done nothing wrong. Nothing wrong? You no. just tried to shoot me, stab me, and strangle me. If you don't think that's something wrong, perhaps I should bring up the fact that you're a thief. I am not a thief. No? What would you call a person that tries to steal a necklace worth $250,000? A revolutionary. A what? I am an anarchist. An anarchist? See, I am Miranda Basadas, and my father was Emilio Basadas. Perhaps you have heard of yeah, him. Yes, I have heard of him. And let me tell you this, gringo. The thief in your house was not I, it was Ramon Monteja. Is that a fact? Yes. And the necklace he gave you to keep for him was not his. It belongs to the people. What people? The peons of Sonora. It was bought and paid for by the poor. And they were forced to contribute to show their love for the wife of Max Million when he ruled Mexico. <sighs> yeah. It is called... Call out the necklace. Well, now, if that's true, what's Mantea doing with it? He was an agent for Maximilian and Carlotta. That was his reward for betraying his country. Senora, on behalf of the people of Sonora, I demand that you surrender the Carlotta necklace to me. in this country. There isn't, miss. If you are a free man, why do you work as a servant for these gringos and dados? It's my job. Oh, no, my friend, no. I will tell you why. It is because you are still a slave, just as the poor everywhere in the world are slaves of the rich. Animals to be, to be starved and worked and beaten. I guess I just hadn't thought of it that way. It is time you did. If you want to be ready for the day when the poor rise up and throw up their shackles. Viva Miranda! <laughs> you bingo, go ahead and scoff. But your day of reckoning will come. Excuse well, uh, excuse me, miss. All right. And now, senor. Yes? I demand to be allowed to leave this house today. Dr. Morales said you'll stay, and when Dr. Morales says you may leave, you may go. I do not understand you. No. You will not have me arrested, and you will not let me leave. That's right. In Mexico, I would have been put in front of a wall and executed. Oh. What kind of haciendado are you? Is that what you want, to be executed? I want to leave! Oh, be quiet. I want to leave! No!
You could not have kissed me if, if I had not let you. Why did you? I'll, uh, tell Mother you're leaving. There was a feeling of autumn in the air today, didn't you think so? Oh, mm hmm Won't Senor Nick be here for dinner? Oh, no, he had to go to Stockton. He won't be home till late, I'm afraid. Senora, hmm? you have not asked me why I did not leave today, as Senor Nick told you I would. No. Why not? I come into your house as an imposter and to steal, and yet you treat me as though I have done nothing wrong. Well, I don't think you have. Not yet. I have never known haciendados like you. Well, maybe that's because you... Uh... You never really looked for them. you to still be here. I wanted to talk to you before I left. What about? The Carlotta necklace. All right. Well. Senor, you have never been poor. And you have never been hungry. I don't mean for an hour or a day. I mean, for weeks and months. No, I haven't. I have been. What do you think made my father a revolutionary? And why do you think I rode with him? I don't know. For years, he worked without reward on him. He lived without hope. He watched my mother slowly die because she... she gave what little food they had left to... to their children. To me and to my sisters and brothers. And still we were hungry. Pardon me, but... What has this got to do with the necklace? There is starvation in the areas the revolutionaries control in Sonora. We need money to buy grain and cattle. Food to stop children from crying and to prevent the death of many people. The Carlotta necklace is our only hope of getting the money. Oh, senor. I have never begged for anything in my life. But I do now. I beg you to give me the Carlotta necklace, please. Oh, Miranda. And I, it doesn't belong to me. But it does not belong to Ramon Monteja either. That's not for me to decide. Senor, please. Miranda. Miranda. If it were mine to give, you would have it. I believe you. Where are you going? 
Und die Sonora? Do you want to go? I have no choice. Yes, you do. No. What's wrong? Um, I could not get the necklace. The Barclays found out who I am. How did you get away? I did not have to get away. You mean they just let you go? Yes. Mateo, we have to forget about the necklace. Forget it? We have no choice. Oh, we still have Montea. No. We're going to let him go. What's happened to you, Miranda? Nothing has happened to me. Well, I've never seen you give up so easily before. Well, I know when we are beaten. Well, then it is the first time. All right, then it is the first time. Get done, Montea. No, no. Stay where you are. I don't understand you. Are you forgetting all the hungry people we have in our hands back in Sonora? Are you forgetting that if we don't feed them, we'll have lost everything? That we're through? I'm through now, Mateo. Oh, what does that mean? It means that I'm not going back to Sonora. Miranda! I can't, Lazaro. Oh, why? Why? Don't leave her alone! <laughs> now answer me. Why aren't you going back? Because Nick Barkley wants me to stay. So that's it. He's in love with you. And you're in love with him. I'm sorry I lost my temper. Forgive me. In you, my friend, my apologies. I'm truly sorry. Miranda, you're making a mistake. Giving up everything you fought for for so long. But I have fought for my people and they will go on fighting. Oh, but without the Carlotta necklace, without money to buy food and guns, they will lose. Oh, Miranda, think. With that necklace, victory is assured. We can rule all of Sonora. We, my dear? Yes, us, you and I, all of us in this room. And who is to decide that? We are. We've done the fighting. We deserve the reward. Reward? What would you do? Hand over Sonora to a mob of peasants? No, I... I would let the people rule themselves. Oh, Miranda. Open up your eyes. Look around, see what the world really is. Do you know what would happen? The haciendados, within a week, would get their ranchos back without it costing them one centavo. And, um, how much would we charge them, Mateo? We could get millions out of them. Have you bought and sold revolutions before, or is this the first time? What is the matter with you? Don't you hear what he is saying? Remember, Miranda? You asked me to pick those who would ride with us. I'm sorry to disappoint you. Oh, you don't... You don't disappoint me. You sicken me. And you make me despise myself for thinking I could ever love you. I really thought you were different. A man who fought with another people in another country because he believed in their fight. You are nothing more than a mercenary! 
so I'll forgive you for thinking I'm a fool. But you could have men waiting outside the canyon. I could have. So you understand my problem. I have to get back to Mexico for this to do me any good. Yes, you would have to do that. So you're coming with me. Mateo, don't. You're my ticket to the border. It's all right. Get out, the rest of you. How many men have you got out there, Barclay? Marshal and three deputies. Is the Marshal a friend of yours? I hope so, for your sake. Because if they try to take us, you're dead. Put this in my saddlebag and get our gear together. We're leaving. Look. 
Looks like Nick called it. You could have used him to get the necklace back. Why didn't you? I don't know. I, I just couldn't. It's strange. All of my life I've been taught to hate the haciendados. I never thought one could teach me anything. Well, I think maybe we're even. I never thought I could learn anything from a revolutionary... Revolutionary? Revolutionario. Rebel. to thank you, amigo. Well, is something wrong? You're sure this is yours, Monte? But of course it is mine. Not according to Miranda. She says it was bought by the people of Sonora and presented to the Empress Carlotta. Certainly you do not believe her. Yes, I do. A rebel? A revolutionary? An anarchist? Yes. You mean you are going to turn it over to her? No, I'm going to turn it over to the marshal here. And he's going to give it to the Mexican consul. But it is mine. That, I'm afraid, is your private little battle with the Mexican government. I'll need a statement from you, Mr. Montea. Come with me, please. I'll see you in town, Nick. Let's go back to the house, shall we? Mateo for deceiving my people. But is that any worse than deserting them? Well, I... That is exactly what I would be doing if I stayed here. And the guilt that I would feel would... would be a... a wall between us. Well, you... don't have to go home right away. You could wait around a day or two. No. Now I know if I do not go now, I will not go at all. 